Thanks for joining us here today. My name is Suzanne Janis. I'm a certified personal trainer and senior exercise specialist with Destination Fitness in home training. Today we are visiting the beautiful home and property of my client Jane, who just so happens to be a master gardener and flower show judge. We are here to share some helpful information to keep your body and your garden healthy and strong. When you think about exercise, you think about exercising in your local gym, fitness center, or home. Did you know gardening qualifies as exercise? Gardening can bring all kinds of health benefits, including reducing your blood pressure, improving your mood, and cardiovascular benefits. Gardening is a fantastic way to exercise along with the fresh air, sunshine, that brings us the vitamin D that we so need here in the Midwest, and it brings a great sense of purpose. My favorite part of gardening is what they call grounding or earthing. It's a therapeutic technique that involves doing activities that ground or electrically reconnect you to the earth. Try it. Take your shoes off and walk or sit on the grass. In no time, you will feel reconnected. So let's open the doors and let's get outside and get started. Remember before starting any new exercise, always consult your physician. Also use caution when working in the garden. Mind where you where you are walking as the terrain and level changes from winter to spring. Wear a good pair of garden gloves and sturdy shoes. Also be aware of your environment. Be careful not to tri um, trip on any hose or garden tools. Jane and I have worked all winter long on her cardio and her balance and her strength and her coordination. Now it's time to reap the rewards. Jane and I are going to demonstrate eight exercises that can keep you strong throughout the gardening season. Remember, before starting any exercise, make sure you stretch and warm your muscles. Let's begin with the farmer's walk. This exercise will help to strengthen your body for everything from carrying grocery bags, from your car to your house, to carrying buckets of watering cans around your garden. With a farmer's walk, you get the advantage of cardio and strength training. Start with your shoulders back and down and your core tight. Make sure you stand straight and upright. Don't forget to make sure your path is clear. As you build your core strength, you can try doing these with only one arm loaded to help strengthen your balance when shifting from side to side. As you can see, it's not a problem for Jane when she's watering her garden. Hey, did Jane just set those pails down? That's our next exercise, the squat. Squats. This exercise is ideal for strengthening your lower body and core and will help keep you strong in order to lift bags of compost, flower baskets, and planters. Remember to always lift using your legs. Strong legs, lower body, and core will help you stay strong for all kinds of gardening activities. Beginners should start with chair squats and then advance to standing squats. Once you gain strength, you can add weights using water bottles or free weights. Remember, don't let your knees go over your toes and bend at the hip. Our next exercise is lunges. Our knees take a lot of pounding on a daily basis, especially in the garden when kneeling and squatting. Lunges are the perfect exercise to keep those knees strong. Lunges also help to build strength and flexibility through the hips. A beginner should start with stationary lunges and work toward forward stepping walking lunges. Remember to keep your core tight and don't lean forward.
is that Jane in a lunch position? Nice job breaking up the soil and mulch. Let's push on over to our next exercise. Push-ups and overhead press. It is so important to keep your upper body strong, not only during summer months, but all year long. Push-ups can be difficult, so start by doing push-ups on the wall or counter, and then move to a lower surface. Then as you become stronger and you feel confident in getting up off the floor, you can try push-ups on your knees, hopefully some days on your hands and feet. Push-ups will also keep you strong in order to push your lawnmower and your wheelbarrow. But what about hanging baskets and watering those hanging baskets? How about putting gardening tools away on a shelf? This is where overhead press exercise comes in handy. Start with light weights. Keep your shoulder and your back straight with your core tight. Start with your hands at shoulder height. This can be done seated or standing. Press weights overhead. If you have issues with your shoulder, just lift to the level of your ears. Choppers. We do rotational movements every day, but we don't realize it. For instance, when we grab our seatbelt in the car and lock it into place, we are doing a rotational movement. This exercise will keep your core stable, great for your obliques and upper abs. A stable core means better mobility and better footing, especially when walking on unlevel ground like your yard or stepping off a curb onto a pavement. This exercise will also help prevent injuries like pulling your lower back muscles. We need to make sure our bodies are prepared for twisting and lifting, not only during gardening, but all year long. You can do this exercise in a chair or standing. This can be done with weights or no weights. Raise the weights diagonally across the body as you bring it back, down, and across. Is that Jane pruning and tossing the clippings? It is. That movement looks just like the wood chopper. Let's move on to our next exercise, which is deadlifts. Deadlifts are the perfect exercise to keep your glutes and upper lower back muscles strong. We live our lives doing all our work in front of us. Because of this, our bodies tend to get stronger in the front, but weaker in the back. It is important to build these muscles up so that when it's time to lift or tend to those pesky weeds, your body will be ready. This exercise can be done in a chair or standing. There are three variations. The first variation is seated hip hinge. Sit forward in your chair with your chest up and your shoulders back and down. Place your hands on your thighs and make sure your ankles are below your knees. Press your feet into the floor as you hinge from your hips, lengthening your spine. Push through your heels to return to start position. The next variation of a deadlift is seated hip hinge with arms extended. Perform the seated hip hinge, but this time reach your arms out in front of you as you hinge forward and draw them back in as you sit up tall. Without support of your hands on your thighs, you may feel more work in your lower body. Deadlift variation number three, standing hip hinge. Stand with your feet hip width apart, chest up and shoulders back and down. Place your hands on your thighs, press your feet into the floor as you hinge from your hip, keeping your spine long and knees slightly bent. Pull your belly button in and push through your heels to return to start position. 
Single arm row. This is a perfect exercise for our shoulders and upper back. Because we do all our work in front of us, many of us tend to get rounded shoulders and postural issues. Rows will help strengthen the upper back muscles and keep our posture strong. Rows will help prepare you for cranking that lawnmower. We all know how exhausting that can get. First, stand alongside a bench with the weight in the hand that is away from the bench. Put your inside hand at the top of the bench for support. Then place your inside knee on the bench and lower your back into the position where your hips, spine, and neck and head are all in a straight line parallel to the floor. Do not curve your spine or lower your head. With your hand holding the weight, palm facing in, slowly and smoothly raise your elbow until it is at the height of your body. Our last exercise is called the modified plank. I know we have mentioned multiple times how important it is to keep our core strong and one of the best exercises there is for our core is the modified plank. The plank not only keeps our abs strong, but also your trunk, pelvis, and abdominals. These muscles carry your body, help with lifting and twisting and bending and lifting back up again. Movements like raking, sweeping, trimming, digging, and hoeing all involve the core. You can start with planks on the counter or rails, then move to a lower level like sturdy coffee table, then on your knees, and hopefully onto your toes. Remember to keep your core tight. This is the Great Arbor. It was here when we moved here, and last year there was a bumper crop of Concord grapes, so I was busy making a lot of jam. And as you can see, there are a lot of branches up on the top. So one day I came out here and I have a two-step footstool. So I was going to get up there and pick the ones on the top. And I did just fine until I went to step off the step stool and forgot I was on the top step. So I had to uh, step way back and I managed to walk backwards and fall into my flower bed, which was a better landing than here on the stones. However, my right arm had a flower pot I had over there. So then I've had to go and have physical therapy because I was in a lot of pain with it and really couldn't use it. But my goodness, they really have helped me. I'm out of pain. So I have to do my exercises for this arm every day to keep it in shape. But it's amazing what physical therapy can do if you follow the instructions and do what they tell you to do. So I'm all better and can garden again this year. This is one of my favorite gardening tools. It also has the soft hand grip on it, but it is a digger and you can also dig out something with it and then you can work it out with the other side so it's really great and uh, it's used for a lot of purposes and it's all in one tool. We're up here at the rose garden which surrounds the fountain. These are knockout roses. Most of them are the red and there are a few pink ones along the hips. And earlier this spring, I did prune them back to about well, where they are now, about a foot or so. And they're starting to come back. And, and soon I will be feeding them. But this is one of the things I use when I'm weeding around them. I do have the mulch, but you still get weeds. So I will take my cart. Sit down, and as I weed, I can roll along. 
You have to be careful sitting on one of these because if you try to stand up, it could roll off and you'll end up on the ground. So always be cautious, especially if you're on a slope. And I use the long gloves when I'm working with the roses because of the rose thorn. And this way it protects my arm. And you can, as I mentioned about the poison idea, it's a good idea to use the long gloves if you're working with something in that field. But um, they were you know, lovely last year, so I'm hoping they'll look as good this year. And I will be feeding them shortly. I feed each one of them individually. And then as they bloom, I do let the stamp bloom and a new grape makes them want to bloom a little bit more. Good afternoon. We have been doing some gardening exercises today and so now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about gardening when you become a senior. I am currently a little over 80 years old. I'm pushing 81 here soon and I just can't do the things I used to do when I was 25. So I've had to modify my gardening skills. And today I'm going to show you some of the things I do and some of the things I'm using to help myself so I can continue gardening. Over here I have what is called an elevated raised bed so that you can come and you can use a chair or a small little cart if you have to work in your garden. It's not real wide, so it's easy to reach over it. I have it against the fence along here, so I'm only going to be working from one side. I'm also waiting for hoops to come and put over the, swing over the top of it so I can have my vegetables that like to climb, like climbing beans and some of your cucumbers. So those will be planted along here. This has been a cold, rainy spring. It's been delayed, so we're way behind. Right now, today, it's like 85, so it goes from 40 to 80 in a day. So things are all mixed up right now. But uh, hopefully, we'll get it all caught up. So I'm a little behind. But also, I have to show you some of the tools I use. This one has a handle that's easy for a person that might have arthritis. It's, it's a little sturdier, and there's some that are soft that you can find and you can squeeze, and, and it really helps you when you're trying to use them. I also like to use this small watering can if I have some little things that need it. I can carry it easily and touch it up with that. Then I also found this, which I thought was pretty neat because I can no longer use my chainsaw. And this is kind of a mini chainsaw. And it's, it's not that heavy. It's really pretty easy to use. So I can go around and trim my shrubs and maybe a lower branch on a tree, but I can't cut the tree down anymore. So I have to get my son or somebody else to do that. And I also um, have long handle items like this to clip with, which is very helpful. If you have a few things you can you know, do your exercises lifting. And then another little thing I do, pots can become very heavy when you put soil in. So what is in this one is styrofoam peanuts. They're lightweight and you can put them in the bottom of a pot and you can either put your soil in with them, mix it in, or I prefer to get another container that will fit. And then I put this one down in here 
and put my soil and my plant in here. And then I can pull it in and out if I need to. So it's real handy, yet you have a nice looking pot and you're not worried about lugging that heavy pot around. I also have other pots that I do the same thing with. Or I elevate, I can show that later, um, put a small pot inside a long thin container and then raise it up so you once again can use a smaller pot and not have such a heavy container. So we'll, in a little bit, go down to my raised bed and I'll talk about that. So it's a little different from the elevated raised bed. When I purchased this bed, I lived in Iowa and I had a small yard. So I moved here to live with my son and just brought it along. And now it just looks like a little mini flower bed because it's so tiny. But it is um, six by two feet. And I plan to put some vegetables in it. And I've been delayed because of the runoff of the water seems to congregate over here. So if we had to let it dry out. So it'll be an experiment this year as to whether I get anything to grow or if we have a lot of rain and it's just soggy all the time. But um, I'm going to give it a try. And then back here, if you want some fan, you can see there are some spring daffodils. I was concerning or have been blooming. And also I found some invasive weeds back in that corner which I have to work at getting out and maybe a lot of you are familiar with honeysuckle everybody loved it it's a plant that's been around for years but it is invasive and they smell wonderful but they are spread by the birds by the seeds so it's now on the invasive plant list in many states so well, realize you have it, you should try and get rid of it. But I could talk for hours on invasive plants, but we won't do that today. Maybe you can notice on the pond the netting has algae in it, and I think the warm weather has gotten this algae going again, so that's always a problem in real hot, humid weather, and uh, it can be a challenge trying to keep it, the pond clean. And now we'll work our way down to the pond.
Okay, does anyone have any questions or comments? You can go ahead and unmute yourself. I want to apologize to you guys about the video with the sound. Um, we were dealing with the outdoor elements and many times it's hard to capture sound and video when there's extra sounds outside like the wind and the birds and the landscapers. And um, so we tried our very best with the sound with our videographer, but we ran into some issues. So I apologize about that. It's much different than filming indoors when you can control, control the environment, but we hope you had fun learning about the exercises that you can do to keep yourself in shape for gardening. And we hope you learned a lot today. Thank you. I was very impressed by, by the gardener. I, I don't remember her name, but you know, wow. <laughs> she that's, was so That's our at. client, Jane. She's phenomenal. She um, is a flower judge emeritus and she also is a master gardener and she knows so much about gardening. She's just phenomenal. Very proud of her. <laughs> no, she does. She has such a beautiful home and such a beautiful garden. Thank you, Jane, if you're listening. <laughs> you're welcome. Oh, she is listening. There I she am. is. <laughs> I can't get the video to work, but I'm here. <laughs> oh, good. Does anybody have any questions for Jane? Their gardener's right here for you. No questions? No uh, I think you ask, where do you get the small uh, uh, benches uh, in the beginning of the video for the rose bush? Oh, the, the one that I was rolling around on, you mean? Uh, yeah, all of those things were so, so uh, nice and they were handy. I was like, wow. <laughs> uh, you can usually find those at like Menards or some garden center to oh, carry okay. them. Or you can find them online at um, gardening mm -hmm. supply, some uh, place like that. Thank you. Where do you find the special tools for people with arthritis, Jane? I was very impressed with that. Uh, I've run into them. Some of the garden centers now do carry them. You can inquire when you go in, but I've also found them on the internet. Um, the big one, Gardener's Supply Company, they have a lot of that type of thing. That's where I got the elevated beds. And so they are kind of into, you know, all kinds of uh, gardening ways. So you can usually find that type of uh, equipment there. I know you mentioned you were getting ready to feed your roses. Um, when I was a little girl, my grandma used to use fish emulsion. What do you recommend for your roses? Well, I buy, um, I believe it's called Bayer now, but it's a rose feed, just it's a granular feed. And uh, you put a cap full of it and spread it around the uh, base of the uh, rose. So that's what I do now. That's easier for me than mixing up some special, you know, concoction. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, do you use anything to keep your flowers uh, more vibrant? A any sort of a, a flower fertilizer for your hanging baskets? Uh, a lot. A lot of times I'll use a Miracle Grow product and it's a, um, kind of a powder type that you put into water, you add it to the water and then you, you know, uh, spray it on or pour it around the base. I use that on my flower pots all summer and I usually dilute it to what they recommend and then maybe once a week I'll put it on and that keeps them going. And they do bloom much better when they get that extra bit of fertilizer. When I've always wondered this, when I go get my flowers from, you know, the flower garden center, should I shake everything off and just keep it 
keep the flower in the roots when I transplant it? Or do I pull it out of the little plastic container and use the dirt that's around it to then transplant it? Well, usually you dig your hole and uh, make sure it's deep enough and, and wide enough so that the plant, you can just tap it gently out of the pot with the soil and place the soil that's around the roots into that new area that you've just dug. And sometimes if the, if you notice the roots in the bottom of the pot are all going around in a circle because it's been in the pot a while, uh, it doesn't hurt to kind of pull those out and trim them a little bit and then put it in the ground and that will stimulate it to get new growth and get moving again. Good. Do you, do you re, uh, so I had a neighbor that was a tomato aficionado and he would dry his tomato seeds out and then use them to replant for the next year. Do you do that? Do you have a favorite tomato brand that you like to plant every year? No, not really. I try different ones. I do like cherry tomatoes because they're, you know, handy for salads mm -hmm. and they're small and they grow quickly and, and there's usually a lot on the vine. But I've tried some of the heirloom and some of the bigger ones and um, it just depends uh, on the year and the weather sometimes as to how well they'll do. And I know people have their favorites, but this year I bought a yellow one. I'm going to try it and see how it goes. Very good. <laughs> I had a question. I bought some uh, uh, plant uh, bulbs from <clears throat> Costco uh, and it just said, just water it. So are you supposed to uh, just, and it came with the pot. So are you supposed to just water it and just leave it because I opened it and I was like, okay, I didn't know whether I had, I'm supposed to separate the bulbs. I, at least one of the parts, I separated the bulbs and uh, and just, just a little while ago, my cousin said, okay, no, you're not supposed to do anything with those. Just, just water it, so. Well, did you get tulips or tulip. daffodils, tulips? Tulips, bulbs. Uh, I, I think I must be having that too. This, uh, it's a con complete oh. bulb kit. It's flower, bulbs, whatever. Seven bulbs inside. Just add water, it says. And I don't know, I kind of messed it, messed it, uh, messed it up uh, because I thought I'm supposed to separate it. And it had some different instructions. So I don't know if I did something wrong. Well, you know, they're doing new things now. So you could leave them in there, I believe. But okay. just read the instructions. Um, but um, like yeah. the daffodils and tulips, usually you just let them bloom in that pot uh, okay. if they come that way, because they're okay. already starting to grow. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so you can let us know how that turns out. Right. <laughs> yes. No, it has a lid on top, so I... And the lid doesn't, uh, I don't think the lid would allow it to grow. I don't know. It's no, just, it's no you have to take that off. <laughs> but you should have some pretty blooms with those uh, lilies. They'll be nice. Yeah, it already has the blooms. So that's why I was like, okay, do I take it out? And I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I bought one too like that. It says, uh, just add water. This one is... Uh, Pre-planted bulbs, begonias, double mix. And so they're comes, making it easier and easier for everybody to plant. <laughs> it comes in the pot. I didn't open it yet. And it just says, uh, just add water. We'll see. Those are really nice, I, I would imagine. My mom lives at Luther Village, and she has a balcony and that oh, would be yeah. a great idea for, for those folks who oh, it really would it'd be or an apartment. Right, it'd be really easy care. And, <laughs> you know, you'll, 
see how those go. Yeah. You have to let us know, Mary Alice. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the other thing mentioned, sometimes you buy like a big planter, but you don't want to use so much dirt because it makes it heavy. Right. I think I heard you mention something about putting something smaller inside, but I heard you buy one of those noodles that people put in the swimming pool, right. like styrofoam, like cut that and put that in the bottom and then right. add the dirt. Okay. Right. You can do that or styrofoam or I happen to have those peanuts and I stuck those in. Only okay. trouble with them is you got to be sure you have something on top of them or they'll blow out you know, all over the yard, the peanuts, because they're lightweight. Oh, right. But, yeah. but that noodle, yeah, I've heard of that using the pool noodles. That's a good idea. Yeah, we went to the Dollar Tree and bought a few of them. Then we're going to cut them up and put them in the bottom of the planter. So yeah. you don't have to add so much dirt. Right, right. And, and then sometimes, yeah, that we got works like really a, a wheels, you know, you can put the heavy planters on that too. Yeah. And then you can just idea. wheel them around <laughs> right. to the right spot. <laughs> yeah, there's all long. these different things you can come up with to make it easier for us, you know. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yep. Great tips, girls. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very good. Well, I know I've learned a lot today. <laughs> Me too. Well, good luck. I hope it all grows for you this summer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jane. Thank you for being a trooper and helping us all learn how to be good gardeners and good garden exercisers. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just keep up the good work and <laughs> you'll be <laughs> successful. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you, Emily. Thanks again. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.